Welcome back. It's clear the atmosphere is now trapping more and more heat, and that's impacting all the spheres of the climate. The hydrosphere, the lithospheres, the land and the rocks, and the biosphere. But you might be wondering how an average increase of one degree really affects our lives. First, let me explain the idea of an average global temperature rise, because an average temperature rise could mean there's plus one degree change in a specific region in Australia, but a plus six degree temperature rise in the Antarctic. Right, this bell curve represents the distribution of all temperatures at a particular location, let's say Paris. The bulk of the temperatures experienced in Paris, those that are close to the average, sit near the middle of the curve. Record temperatures, which are rare, sit on the fringes. Hot to the right in red and cold to the left in blue. Now, watch what happens when the average temperature rises just a little bit. The curve shifts a little bit to the right. But look, that tiny shift results in a proportionally really large drop in the number of extreme cold days and a proportionally large jump in the number of extreme hot days. And also hotter extremes too. That's what we're seeing across the globe. A relatively small change in average temperature results in large increases in the risk of extreme heat waves. That has big consequences for farming and food supplies, but also the energy grid and human health. For example, insects will move into new areas, potentially taking vector-borne diseases along with them. More about all this in the later course, Human Impacts. Let's explore the other impacts of increasing temperatures by chatting with an expert, Dr. <laughs> Kerry Emanuel. Hi, yes, so good to speak to you. You are an eminent professor of atmospheric science at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, and the author of the book, What We Know About Climate Change. So who better to speak to about the extreme events that come from increasing global temperatures? Well, thank you. Yes, Greg, I'm very uh, happy to be here with you here today. Extreme events are really uh, both the canary in the mine for climate change and one of the things we're most concerned about. By canary in the mine, uh, I'm guessing you mean that these extreme weather events, heat waves, excessive rainfall, floodings, droughts, wildfires, you know, tropical cyclones, they warn us about the climate change and the, and the greater dangers on the way. The more, I guess they're more emotional than just talking of increasing temperatures? If you stop and think about it, who really cares whether it might be a few degrees warmer? We're used to much bigger temperature fluctuations between winter and summer. What we care about is whether our house gets burned down by a wildfire or it gets flooded or gets blown away by a hurricane. Yeah, I mean, right away, the Californian wildfires of 2020, uh, the Hurricane Katrina, they come to mind. They're the consequences of man-made climate change, right? You really can't attribute a single event to climate change. And let me give you kind of an analogy that you might have a relative who smoked two packs of cigarettes a day and ultimately got cancer and sadly died of it. Nobody would ask, I wonder which cigarette killed grandpa. We really have to look at the statistics. Okay, so what do the statistics say uh, concerning hurricanes? So there's a strong consensus that the frequency of high intensity hurricanes will increase in most places, particularly in the Northern Hemisphere. There's also a very strong consensus that rainfall from hurricanes, uh, which is one of the most destructive aspects of these storms, will go up quickly as the temperature warms, that the storm surges, which are like tsunamis, but they're driven by wind, they will get worse. As I understand it, tropical cyclones uh, draw their devastating power from the warmth of the ocean, right? As, as the ocean gets warmer, there's more energy in the system, the storms have more speed and they get more destructive. Uh, what about wildfires, though? Well, wildfires are very strongly controlled by climate. And uh, as the climate warms, places that are dry or marginally dry, like much of California, for example, are expected to get dry. 
And one of the consequences of that is we expect to see more wildfires. Sheesh. Okay, right. So you mentioned the dangers of rainfall just now. Dare I ask, what's the data saying about more extreme rainfall? Places that are already wet, we expect to get wetter. Places that are already dry, we expect to get drier. And if you live in an intermediate place where it rains sometimes and doesn't rain others, what we expect to see is that rainfall will get concentrated into less frequent but more intense events. So it won't rain as often, but when it rains, it will rain quite a bit harder. So ironically, what this really means is that we expect to see more floods and more droughts as a consequence of climate change. Oof, the, the data does not paint a pretty picture, does it? Uh, but thank you so much for your time, Kerry. Really appreciate speaking to you. Cheers. OK, so the more we consume fossil fuels and expel CO2 into the atmosphere, the more we are destabilizing the climate and the higher our risks of being hit by these extreme weather events. From heat waves and droughts to cyclones and floods, some devastating extreme weather events are going to become even more frequent. And others will become more intense and more unpredictable. Collectively, this will place agriculture, human wealth and human health under severe stress.